to give you the overview of Starship for Fishbowl. Thank you, Caroline, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Simon Volta, the Director of Sales here with eTechnologies. I appreciate everyone jumping on the call this afternoon and taking some time to learn more about how Starship can integrate with Fishbowl and the advantages Fishbowl can offer to you as well. Um, so as I get started here, I do have a quick presentation um, to review with everyone. For those of you new um, to potentially Fishbowl as well as Starship, or for those of you who are using Fishbowl and are interested in the Starship integration, um, today I'm gonna take you through a little bit how we can pick, pack, and ship um, through the Fishbowl application and then move it into the Starship application to finish the processing for you. Before I get into all of that, a little bit of background on who we are at V Technologies. Um, we're located here in Connecticut. Um, we've been in business since 1987, so a little bit more than 28 years of experience in the Starship application. Uh, we have about a five plus year relationship with Fishbowl um, currently, and we have about 10,000 uh, customers currently with uh, using our application uh, between the US and Canada. Two points I like to emphasize, um, down below I do have the FedEx and UPS logo. Um, because of their subsidy programs that they do offer, um, UPS with their customer technology program and FedEx with their FedEx technology incentive program to inquire with your account representatives um, about those subsidies and how they can help pay for a Starship application. <clears throat> so a couple of the highlights I'd like to get into what you're about to see today with Starship. Um, so Starship um, is a multi-carrier, multi-mode application. Um, we do work with parcel as well as LTL providers. Um, we have the ability to automate your international as well as your LTL documentation. Um, as we pull in those line items um, from your sales order in Fishbowl, um, we will save all that information into our Starship database. So it allows you to print those documents seamlessly without repeating information. Um, we have the ability to print your labels along with your packing slips um, to a thermal or to a laser or potentially even both if you prefer that as well. One of the key features of Starship is our rate shop capabilities. So you can rate shop all of your licensed carriers that are on your Starship license. So anything from LTL and parcel all on one screen. We also have the ability to um, import your shipments that are packed inside of Fishbowl um, that way. So when you bring your order into Starship, um, if it's in two separate boxes, it will automatically appear that way inside of Starship and not have you take an extra step in having to pack that inside of our application. And I'll get more into those details as we get into the live demo here. <clears throat> One of the things that we also have the ability to provide is a custom branded email as well as our dashboard access. Um, these come with your Starship license, um, the ability to uh, brand your email notifications out to your customer um, any way you choose. Um, as well as to provide you with a dashboard access to track shipments, but also for reporting capabilities uh, for customers that, or for uh, reports you might need for important meetings on transportation, late deliveries, um, and you, or you just wanna see something as simple as what you, know, you might be charging your customer versus what um, your carrier's charging you. And then if you uh, have any type of EDI type of orders, uh, we also have the ability of working with partners such as uh, True Commerce, SPS Commerce, et cetera. Um, and we can help generate the XML file um, that will be sent to those applications, um, as well as UCC 128 labels. Um, that way they can take that information and send it off to your trading partners. I won't get too much into that today, but if there's an interest, um, please do reach out and we can talk more in details about that. And then last but not least, as a Starship user, we do provide discounted post office shipping. Um, so you do have the ability um, to get discounted rates um, through Starship. Um, so we partner with a company called Visible Supply Chain that offers you those rates. And kind of speaking of post office, um, two workflows I'm gonna get into today, uh, one being um, a simple parcel uh, workflow uh, with UPS and then kind of doing a rate shop, comparing it to what you would see uh, in comparison to post office. And the other, I'm gonna get into more of an LTL and international workflow and the differences there. Uh, but really why we highlight the post office here um, is because when we start talking about UPS or FedEx and all their accessorial fees, um, you can see on this one slide, the difference, um, all the different surcharges that can be applicable to any one of your shipments 
and the increases that keep happening each and every year. Um, none of these uh, fees that you see here apply with the post office. Um, so you wouldn't see an additional handling fee or a residential fee, um, just to give you, you know, a few examples. This slide here kind of goes into <clears throat> what you could expect from, say, a FedEx or UPS when you're shipping, say, a residential delivery shipment and having to pay, say, $3.85 extra with FedEx, whereas with the post office, you would pay zero. Um, same thing with a delivery or your surcharge, $3.90 tacked onto your base charge, whereas it's zero with the post office. So as we go through this, kind of just keep those in mind uh, when you're doing, you know, kind of if you especially have lightweight shipments, maybe anything under 20 pounds, uh, say zones zero through four, um, that could be, you know, maybe move to the post office. This might be a good time to think about starting to do that to help save some money. And then this just gives you a quick example of where dimensional weight comes into play, and that's getting bigger and bigger every day. Um, where you know shippers have these box sizes um, that they've purchased, they're putting their items into it. But you can see here, you know, as an example, we put this teddy bear, you know, that basically weighs 20 ounces and it's being rounded up to two pounds. Um, so you can kind of see from this chart, um, where FedEx and UPS, you know, is $18 or $17 respectively, and then with you know our discount uh, with the post office, you know, you would see it as $9.97. Um, so again, you can see where dimensional weight could be a big um, deterrent as well, kind of shifting that business potentially to the post office. As I mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about international and what Starship has the capabilities of doing, but really we're going to be looking at printing your commercial invoices. Um, we do have the ability of printing your uh, SLIs, your shipper letter of instruction, um, generating your NAFTA certificate of origin for your Canadian shipments. Um, and then also FedEx and UPS, we do support the electronic, electronic trade documents or the UPS paperless billing options and Starship as well. And then we also support, for those of you shipping commodities valued over $2,500, we do support our ACE integration through Starship where we could basically transfer information to that website to have you basically print your uh, ITN or generate your ITN number to bring back into Starship. This is just a list of carriers that we have direct integrations with today. Uh, so if you see any carriers on here from an LTL or parcel, um, you know, that you do work with uh, in this um, environment, then basically let us know and we can definitely talk more in detail about uh, how we can incorporate that into your Starship application. And one thing I won't get into too much detail today, but I did want to mention um, we have been developing our e-commerce um, marketplaces uh, pretty significantly over the last uh, six to 12 months. Uh, so you can see anything on the left of this uh, page here is basically that um, are all the different marketplaces and shopping carts that we have available in production today. Um, anything on the right um, are ones that are about to be released or are in development as we speak. There's a couple on here we are working on. Um, as well, one being like Presta Shop is, is one we're working on that will be out very shortly as well. So we'll have about a dozen or so different type of shopping cart marketplaces for you to choose from. Um, and the reason I mention this is we do have the ability of what we call e-commerce extension, um, where we can basically update your e-commerce order as well as your fishbowl order uh, simultaneously. Okay, so let me just jump over to my environment here. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm in Fish. I'm going to start in Fishbowl. I'm going to basically show everyone how Fish. For those of you not using Fishbowl and not familiar how to pick and pack inside of Fishbowl, um, I'm going to start there, and then I'm going to take that order into Starship and kind of finish it off with the shipping process for you. So inside of Fishbowl. If we're going to create our sales order. We're just going to basically create a new here first. We're going to basically find our customer that we want to ship to. Okay, so I'm just going to choose my customer. I got my customer information here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add some items that I want on this particular sales order. So you just follow basically the prompts. And I'm just going to go down the list here and I'm just going to pick a couple items. So let's just say, actually, let's 
actually, if we just do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this here. <clears throat> I have enough to pick, so I'm good there. And I'll finish, and that'll be added to my sales order there. And then I'll just add one more so we can kind of get an idea of how we can pack these items in separate boxes as well. <clears throat> okay. So again, I'll have my two items here basically. So if I'm good here, I'm just going to go ahead and save my order. And I also want to make sure that I put the carrier that I want to have it shipped with. So for this um, illustration, I'm just going to choose UPS. And I'm also going to choose it's going to go out ground for this particular customer. And I'll save this again. Okay, so that'll tell us these are fields that we're going to translate into Starship um, and how those will come in uh, to that application automatically. So once I'm good here, I'm going to move over to, I'm going to issue this sales order. <coughs> And I'm gonna go over to pick. So I gotta pick my order now. So I gotta go find and make sure I have enough in my inventory to basically pick these two items. These two little green arrows here mean basically that I'm good. I do have enough in stock. So if I really want to, I can click on each one and finish it off. Um, but if I go ahead and click here, I'll click on finish. This will ask me for the serial number that I wanna um, choose where it's coming from. I'll select that. finish and then basically I will go ahead and do the same thing here on this particular item okay so now I've basically picked my item um, I can go over to ship and now this will be basically creating the shipment dock that Starship will be pulling from and you'll notice that that shipment number here seven zero is what we just did so you can see here that mountain bike along with the brake pads that I chose and now if I want to go ahead and pack this into two separate boxes, I can do that. Um, it automatically put it in one carton, but if I want to add a carton into my shipment, I can go ahead and do that. I could put its you know, dimensions here if I choose. You know, so if I want to make this oops, 10 by 10 by 10, I can do that. Hit OK. I've now created a second carton, and I can simply take these brake pads and move those down. And now I have basically two boxes that will be brought into Starship when I bring this order in. I'll save this. Okay, and just a couple things to note. So your ship to this will be basically brought into Starship along with the carrier and carrier service has been mapped automatically for you. So those will be brought in as well. Um, so you don't have to manually choose those. So as I get into Starship here, so this is the Starship application. So a couple things to highlight in the upper left quadrant here. So we have a couple different ways. If your fishbowl pick ticket is barcoded, you could use a wedge type scanner to scan that um, uh, shipment ID number into this field. You could type in the, the uh, number as well, or you could simply do a lookup. When I do a lookup, I can come here, choose my order number 70 that I just did. I will load my document. It's going to load all that information in there for me, as we just saw from Fishbowl. Okay, so you'll notice here, brought it in as UPS ground, billing my account number. It's me as the sender. Um, you could have multiple sender IDs if you choose to do that. If you're doing a drop ship, for instance, um, you could have as many sender IDs as you like to store in here. And we can talk more in detail about that if that's part of your workflow. Um, but also your recipient has been mapped as well, what you just saw. And we've also can do an address validation, which will at, validate the street address, but also validate the commercial versus residential uh, piece of it as well to avoid those address correction fees that you might see on your invoice today. <clears throat> Down at the bottom, um, we basically have our items that we just saw. So your mountain bike and the brake pads are here. You'll notice two separate boxes. They've both been packed. There's no reason to move these around. Um, if you did for some reason need to put this into one carton, you would need to go back into Fishbowl to make that change um, or modify the order to bring it back into Starship. 
Um, but again, because it's packed, um, we can't make any modifications to this inside of Starship. Um, just to highlight a couple of the things on the line item view, so we do bring over your item number from Fishbowl. We bring in your description. We bring in your value as well as your weight um, for that specific unit. And then if this is LTL related, we can store things such as your NMFC uh, code along with your class information and your description. If this was international, which I'll show you in the next workflow, um, we do have the ability to store your Schedule B information, your NAFTA or Certificate of Origin information as well. Um, so that way you don't have to repeat, repeatedly enter this information every order you have for the specific item number. Um, one of the key features is the rate shop, as I mentioned. So if it, you'll notice here it automatically brought it in UPS ground. However, if I wanted to uh, basically do this and rate shop this uh, shipment, I can go ahead and hit shop all here. Um, this will go out and basically rate the um, all my licensed carriers that are on my Starship license and will show me my negotiated rates with each of those carriers. Um, so here I can pick and choose if I want to choose a FedEx over UPS or say post office for that matter. You can do those things inside of uh, this screen without having to re-import the order over again. So as it comes back and retrieves those rates for us, <clears throat> we'll see that here in a second coming up. Okay, Sarah, here we go. Um, so <clears throat> we have basically our um, charges where we can sort by lowest to highest um, by clicking on charges here. You'll notice basically UPS ground was you know fourth in line here, um, but SurePost would come out the least expensive for you in this particular example. If you wanted to ship this priority mail, because if you notice, we also get the delivery times back from the carrier's API as well. You'll notice UPS ground was four days, but Priority Mail says it would have been delivered in two days. So for an extra, you know, dollar, um, roughly, you could get your package there two days quicker. So if you did want to make that change, you could basically select that here uh, on Priority Mail, and your Priority Mail label would print at that point in time. So if I want to go ahead and ship and process this order, I can go ahead and hit F5 or the ship and process icon here. This will go out. It'll send the carrier the notification that the package is ready, um, but also um, will print your, what we call our smart label. So this is one version that we have that we've created. It's an eight and a half by 11 document that'll have your pack list as well as your label attached. Um, but you would also have the ability of printing to a four by six thermal and having your uh, pack list print to a laser printer or the thermal uh, printer as well, if you prefer. And then as we do the processing as well, I should mention that we do have the write back that happens seamlessly back to Fishbowl, which I'll show you here in a second as the labels are printing now. So here's this smart label that I just mentioned. Here's basically your label, um, which is package two of two. Um, so again, I mentioned this is the four by six die cut label. Um, we do have the ability of putting your company logo on these if you prefer that, as well as your packing list. Um, we'll tell you basically what the item was along with the order number, how many were ordered. If there was a back order, it will tell you that as well on this particular pack list. But again, we give you a template designer which allows you to basically design this as you please. Um, you can eliminate fields if you prefer. Um, you know, but again, this is something that we, we provide so you don't have to do this inside of Fishbowl itself. So as I mentioned, we did the right back to Fishbowl. So if I go back to the order here in Fishbowl, and I just refresh this, you'll notice if I click on cart in one here, your tracking ID from UPS has been put back in the tracking number field. It's also been put up here on the line item. Um, the weight of that particular package along with its associated cost has been put back there as well. And same thing on box number two, you'll see that here as well. So the associated tracking number along with its weight and along with its associated cost for that particular package. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, we do have one other workflow I'm gonna walk you through, and that's our LTL as well as our inter with our international shipment. So let me get back into Starship. So kind of the same process as we bring in that sales order, um, we're basically gonna go find that um, inside of Starship here, order number 69. We're gonna load that document, and a couple things to point out here as this pulls in. So before, if you remember, we had just our boxes that were appearing. 
But on this particular example, we do have our pallet that shows up now because we have this coming in UPS freight, um, along with all my items that are on that order. So I have all of my items packed into one, car, uh, one box, and then those, that one box is gonna be put on a particular pallet. If you had multiple boxes, then obviously multiple boxes would appear here. Um, but again, all of these now have its associated Schedule B numbers I mentioned earlier, um, along with its certificate of origin. Um, so basically, if I click in here, you can see kind of everything has already been stored and saved. So I don't have to do this every single time that I would uh, bring this item in um, next time for. So again, this is saved for you inside our database and it's tied to that um, appropriate item number um, in Starship. So <clears throat> as I get into here um, under the international tab, um, the reason we bring in all your line items is it helps us generate the commercial invoice. Um, because all these items have a value, you'll notice we're basically creating your commercial invoice and showing what the total value is for this particular order. Um, so on your commercial invoice, when you see that print in a second, you'll notice that $164.40 um, basically is going to appear um, for your particular um, uh, commercial invoice. So, and again, we could do the rate shop here if you prefer to do that, but again, it's gonna bring it in however you imported that order. So this example, we brought in a UPS freight guaranteed. So we'll bring that in with its appropriate delivery time. I won't go through the rate shop in this particular example, um, but again, you can pick and choose if it's LTL related, different carriers you might have on your license as well. If you go ahead and ship and process this particular order, um, same thing. Um, here, the difference you're gonna get is the bill of lading. Um, along with the appropriate documents. So your commercial invoice, your NAFTA certificate, because we're going to Canada, um, basically those documents will print here uh, for you uh, uh, with your associate bill of lading. Um, and then certain carriers too on the LTL side, I should mention, um, do provide their own bill of lading um, that you can have either emailed to you or will print automatically. Um, but also we do have a generic bill of lading that Starship provides that is customizable and you can, again, make and look feel how you want. Um, and that you'll see here in a second, but here you can see your certificate of origin. Um, everything in here from your Schedule B information to your description of goods um, is all listed. Your next document here that's gonna print is your commercial invoice. Again, you'll notice here all of your items um, and associated values are on here. And then last but not least, your bill of lading will also print right behind it. And then the other thing is the pro number will automatically generate uh, for specific carriers on our bill of lading. So you won't need, if you're using a roll of labels, you won't need those any longer going forward because again, we do have the ability on certain carriers to be able to retrieve those pro numbers uh, electronically. Okay, so if I go back into Fishbowl here and I pull up my order number 69, Just refresh this order. You'll notice here on the cart in one. So the difference on the LTL side is we're putting the pro number back onto your first cart in level, um, along with the total cost for the entire shipment. So it's a little different than parcel because parcel we're providing you with a charge per box, whereas basically on the LTL front, we're providing you one cost for the entire shipment. So that's one of the main differences there. So with that being said, and I mentioned earlier, um, we do have a dashboard access as well as our e-notify uh, tool. Um, and again, we can show those to you if you're interested um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that available today to kind of get into, but again, with the dashboard, you do have access to a bunch of different reporting options, as well as the ability to track shipments regardless of the carrier. Uh, and then with our e-notify tools, a way to notify and provide more of a personable uh, notification to your customers uh, for those uh, shipments going out to them each and every day. So at this time, um, I know we have the schedule for about an hour, um, but I, that is all I do have to review